Hello booktube, so I'm going to make a video dedicated to my e-reader because uh, I've been e-reading for a bit now, uh, for the past few years, and uh, I quite like it, but I've been experiencing very interesting things with my current e-reader. So, I'll, first I'll introduce the e-reader that I do have. I have a Kobo Forma. So, this is a Kobo Forma uh, from, as you see, it's not Kindle, it's Kobo. When I was looking to buy my first e-reader, I distinctly avoided uh, Kobo, or Kindle. Not because of any moral reasons, because I know it's fashionable nowadays to uh, abandon Amazon and anything Amazon related. Uh, I didn't have that kind of issue. For me, it was more of a practical thing. The largest e-reader at the time when I was out looking for an e-reader they had was the, uh, the Kindle Oasis and uh, the, I thought the Kindle Oasis looked, looks really good but it was a little bit too small for me but I'll, I'll get into that uh, what, uh, when I talk about my current e-reader and why I chose this one because I bought this one brand new on the Kobo website uh, and the, this is the Kobo Forma and uh, I bought this, what, two years ago now, probably exactly around this time of year, two years ago. So I've been reading uh, on my e-reader for around two years. And I gotta say, before I got my e-reader, I was very much a, uh, I was very much like reading one book at a time. And I didn't, and that's like, I just grabbed one book and I'd read it and it would take, as, take me as long as I wanted to read it. And if it was, if it was a book, I wasn't totally uh, engaging with my, the book would take longer and I wouldn't read anything else now I think that's crazy uh, I always have a book on the go on my e-reader whether it's a collection of essays or short stories or or just another book this book on here on the cover is not actually a book I'm reading right now it's just a, an example that I want to talk about uh, once I get into the inner workings of my e-reader I've never been against e-reading really uh, I mean, maybe for a bit at one point, uh, but what really converted me was just public domain classics, because I'm a big reader into classics, and you have this Project Gutenberg website, which is full of free classics, and I thought it was insane, because I, I was going to use bookstores and buying uh, these classic volumes for like six dollars, uh, or four, five, six dollars, and if I just could cut out all those uh, English classics that I could get for free on Project Gutenberg it would save me a lot of money and that's what it's that's what it's done so like I have the collected Dickens I have the collected Trollope I have the collected uh, what Melville uh, Hawthorne all on here and I've it's it saved me a lot of money though I do have certain editions that I do want and some English editions that you do need to have physical volumes for now most of my buying for uh, for uh, Use books is nonfiction stuff that you can't get for free on uh, public domain, and certain editions that have scholarly works to them, so or, or trans works in translation, where the translation is in, in not in the public domain. Um, but anyways, uh, so th that's basically what I've uh, my little short little history on e-reading. Uh, now, getting into the pros and cons of this particular e-reader. I know some people were making a, a deal about having tape uh, specifically on my e-reader. And that's for one particular reason, is that when I first opened this from its package, uh, there's this plastic, there was a plastic covering on there with a little tab here where you pull it, and you just like the factory tab, and you pull it off. Uh, well, I have realized when I was pulling it off, I was like right up to here, when I realized, hey, wait, this tab or this plast or this sticky covering would make a perfect, uh, um, you know, uh, screen covering or whatever they call it, screen protector. And so I hastily put it back on, but there was a bunch of air bubbles there, and of course the tab always came off. So then, when I was trying to e-read it, uh, uh, read uh, with my e-reader, this would always get caught on something, and there'd be hair and dust that would get underneath there, so it would stick down. Uh, and I ended up using painter's tape to stick it down, as you see, and now that's it's been like that for ever since I bought it. So I've never actually touched the actual screen of my e-reader because it's got this uh, well-worn 
uh, factory covering on it. And maybe that's changed my experience with e-reading. I don't know, like maybe the actual screen is a lot smoother, but I'm sure it's saved a lot of scratches on this thing. Uh, but anyways, this is the Kobo Forma. And you see it's got a wider screen and it's got the page turn buttons and it's kind of got the bezel back on there. The uh, power button is right over here and then where you plug it in to charge it and side the books is over here. And also another reason why I did chose the Kobo uh, is because I can sideload EPUB files. At least when I bought this, Kindle couldn't do that. I believe Kindle has changed that now where you can uh, sideload uh, EPUB files. On, on this one here, I just, it's very easy. I just drag and drop on my laptop right into this e-reader. and I, So that's been ex extremely convenient. But anyways, with pros and cons of this e-reader. So this is the Kobo Forma. And if that doesn't, rec if you don't recognize that, that's because literally hmm, six months after I bought this, uh, Kobo discontinued this line of, of uh, e-reader. And I don't know if that's been one of the reasons why I'm having unusual amount of problems with this e-reader. But uh, even then, um, it's very strange uh, or very disappointing uh, some of the obvious issues I've had with this. But anyways, I'm going to start with pros because I want to start positive. The pros is I chose this distinctly because of the size. This is an 8 inch, if you go from here to here, this is an 8 inch screen. And I believe the uh, the Kindle Oasis is only 7. And the reason why I wanted a larger, uh, I wanted a larger screen. This is not the largest you can buy. I believe uh, uh, Kobo has a larger e-reader that's like 10 inches. But that one is a lot more expensive and it's note taking and whatnot and all this, these features that I don't really care to have. So eight inches is what I went with. And the reason why, because I have a prompt here, is because I wanted to simulate the, the page of a paperback. And while this doesn't quite do it, eight inches is too, still too small. Uh, let's see if I can line this up. So right here, as you see, it, it's about width, length, uh, width, it's about the same. But then you still got a lot here. So then when you have the page of text, this is still more page, I believe this is still more pages or words on a page than if you were to just have a whole page here. And I, and I, I want to simulate that feeling of reading a, a book. I don't like to have my font too big uh, and having it and you're constantly turning the pages. I like to have that feeling of just going through a page and then go, uh, going to the next page and and uh, continuing through the book like that. So the 8-inch screen was big for me. That's why I chose this one specifically. And also the page turn buttons. The page turn buttons are very important to me as well. And mostly because I like to hold it with one hand. So I can hold it like this. And I'm just reading in any position. There's no having to... As much as I like physical books, always having to... Part of the, there's only certain reading positions that you can be in where they're comfortable. For me, I can lie down and just ha hold this in one hand and just read on my pillow. And it's it's very easy. I, it's, it's like when people hold their phone and they're just lying down in bed. I can do that with this. And it's very, uh, very convenient. Uh, and... Going on the inside, let's, so going on the inside, this is the text here. Uh, you can change the, what I like about this e-reader, you can change the font, uh, and but you can also change the font size, which I'm sure you can do on Kindle, or on Kindle as well. Uh, but you can also change the, let's go to the page here, right there. So you can also change the line spacing and the margins, and also the line of the text which all, they're all very convenient. I don't actually really use any of them except for doing my best to simulate a page in a book. So that's basically how I set it. And I like to have it fairly small like that where it just covers the entire thing. That when I first got this, there was a lot of ingrained stuff there to, to distract you. Like at the very bottom, they had page numbers ingrained or there was like a progress bar into the book. And there was like the time and all these kinds of stuff that I got rid of right away is because even even with um, I'm a bit weird that way, but even with 
uh, a page like this, I can get distracted by pages where I'm like, oh, I'm reading fairly slow. I've only read 10 pages already. And, or if it's a book that's a slog, then I'm very conscious of the page numbers. And I'm, I, I'm, as much as I don't like that, because it distracts from the reading, this takes that away completely. So I don't, and as long as I, until I uh, touch the screen, then you see the page numbers. And then you also got the time at the top. Uh, and uh, also with this particular edition, uh, when I bought this one, uh, there was two uh, for room. There was two options for room uh, gigabytes, uh, and there was the eight gigabyte version and there was the thirty-two gigabyte version. And I got the thirty-two gigabyte version immediately because I knew that I wanted wanted to sideload a bunch of books and I wasn't sure how much room they would take. And uh, turns out. 32 gigabytes was the way to go because uh, I, I did as I, I did a little bit of research into my e-reader and I have 1668 books in this e-reader for a total of 14.3 gigabytes which includes like PDFs and um, like larger books that have images in them though this isn't color so it doesn't show anything in color and I still but because this is 32 gigabytes, I still have 17.7 gigabytes of space in this e-reader, and then that's that's almost 2,000 e-books, and I still haven't, and that's more than I could ever read in probably 10 years, and and yet I still have over half the space of, of room in this e-reader, uh, and another virtue of this, oh, the last pro that I have written down is that this e-reader charges very quickly and uh, that's very important uh, because I can plug it in and then within like 30 minutes this thing is at 100% and um, but I will go into the the battery in my con list because uh, there is some cons here but uh, my last pro or another pro I guess is the uh, what I like is that y is you can change the uh, the the lighting or the backlit screen so right now there's no light I don't think there's any light coming from this uh, let's see oh there's a little bit little bit but if you go here you see that you just slide along this, the, the top of uh, the left hand side and then that changes it I have it at warm light so that's why it's giving warm light but I can make that a lot uh, more distinct and uh, so then I turn it completely off and I like that a lot that's very useful when if, if it's at night and you don't want that back to the screen so much because I have a lamp right here uh, right by my bed so then I can just turn that down uh, or if there if I'm like I'm uh, or if I don't want to move at all from my reading position and yet it's uh, it's winter or it's becoming winter so it's uh, the, the light goes down a lot sooner uh, the sunset goes down a lot sooner and then I have to and I don't want to move my position to turn on the light, I can just turn up my my uh, lighting here on the e-reader, and it's perfectly fine. Uh, but then we get to the cons, and I'm going to start start with the major con right away. Let's do, let's see. Yep. The major con just literally happened on screen. We have it live. Uh, oh, no, there we go. Well, I guess I'll talk about that major con now. This e-reader glitches a lot, and that really bothers me. So uh, when I was using this, uh, when I'm using this as my main read, right now this is not what I'm mainly reading. I'm mainly reading a physical book. I showed it in my uh, my Tuesday Reads video. I'm reading uh, Dostoevsky's uh, Devils. So that I have that as a physical copy. Uh, but when I'm reading a, a, a book on here, if I'm reading this week in, week out, uh, and I'm constantly putting the, it through a lot of use, this will glitch on me at least once or twice a week, and or glitch or or freeze, however you want to turn it, turn it. And it's the most ridiculous things that set it off. It's not like I'm doing anything ridiculous or anything crazy to it. It would be like whether I'm trying to highlight something, uh, or when I'm annotating something and I'm typing, and then it'll just freeze or uh, when I'm turning it on and off, 
will this work? Yeah, there we go. But right, right, right then, when I tried to turn it off before to give this this cover, it it would it wouldn't do anything. It just froze on me, and I couldn't touch the screen. And uh, and actually, when I was reading, I read uh, in my in my Tuesday reads, I mentioned Kristen Ryman's Zero at the Bone. I read that on here, and. Uh, there was actually a, a point where I was highlighting something, because I highlighted a lot in that book. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, it glitched and highlighted the entire chapter. So the entire chapter was highlighted in that distinct gray highlight, which you get on black and white e-readers. And I couldn't undo the highlight. It wouldn't let me. Uh, every time I tried to, like, um, when you have a highlighted section, you can press down on it, and then it'll give you options to, to delete it or add an annotation. And it would let it, and that would show up, but it would freeze right away. And I would, ha I think I reset this thing, like seven or eight times during just trying to delete that one annotation, and it wouldn't let me. And I refused to read that rest of that chapter under this dumb highlighted, gray, monotone text. So I had to take my phone. Uh, I can't show you that my phone because I'm using it to record, but I had to take my phone on there and. Uh, read the rest of that chapter on the Kobo app and highlight and annotate in there because that syncs onto here so all those annotations and whatnot stay but I was still very annoyed at that and I still can't I still can't get rid of that it's still a glitch on on that current that, that file in my e-reader and I don't want to delete that e-reader e or that uh, epub or that uh, that file because it has all my annotations on there so I, there's really no way to get rid of that glitch but I also like just turning it off turning it on certain really obvious and really dumb glitches all the time on this thing uh, then the next one is uh, another big one for me at least it's the covers so this is an EPO, uh, a Kobo EPUB file which I bought I bought this book uh, this ebook off of the Kobo site. And those come in special like Kobo EPUB files, uh, which are different from just regular sideloaded EPUB files. Um, and I'll show you. So my, my Kobo does not show all the covers uh, when I buy these EPUB, uh, or these um, ebooks off the, the Kobo store. And I'll show you what I mean. This is an average look at my uh, library of just Kobo books I bought or ebooks I bought off of the Kobo store. So this one, a few of these here have their covers loaded, but these ones here don't. They're just plain files. And if I click one, I still get the text and everything, and it still works as a normal file. But when I turn it off, this is what I get. I get the the title and then just this blurry, dis very non-distinct cover. And that's what I have to see, even though the actual file, uh, what it should look like, let's see if it, yeah, here we go. This is inside the file itself. This is what the cover should look like. This is uh, John Gardner's collections on, on writing. And then when I turn it off, then it just gives me that distinct or very boring title page. I've gotten used to it now, but that used to really, really bother me, and it still does in some uh, some instances where so much so that it even puts me off writing, uh, reading the book. Like for example, uh, I have a novel on here. Uh, what's it called? Um, we the Drowned. It's a it's a strange novel. I haven't actually read it yet, but I, I'm very interested in reading it. But the cover is so gorgeous that I want that cover there, but it doesn't load on here, and I've tried so many different ways to load it like I've s deleted the ebook re-downloaded it in, in, and in many different ways and it still still won't load so it's basically when I purchase ebooks from the Kobo site and I download them onto here uh, or it updates onto here it's a roulette wheel on which covers will load and which ones won't and as you see um, the odds are going against it actually loading like most of my e my latest e uh, ebooks don't actually load on here as you see and then there's just 
pages and pages of just blank. And I know that would be a huge turnoff for some people. For me, it's not it's not enough to make me stop reading this or to complain too much. Uh, and I have contacted uh, Kobo, like uh, Kobo, um, I don't know, customer information or custo whatever you call it, customer support. And they recommended that I go into the settings feature, uh, manage information, and that I go to this here where this advanced tab here, it says, uh, Repair, repair your Kobo account, which is like this, uh, a refresh of your Kobo e-reader without actually, um, it's not, it's basically the closest you can get to a complete refresh of your e-reader without um, doing a factory reset. And I'm very hesitant to do that because I have a lot of EPUB, uh, EPUBs or siloed books on here and even if those do not end up getting uh, get deleted in the process, I still have a lot of annotations on them. And I'm afraid that those annotations will be deleted. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, so I'm, so it's either delete my annotations on those EPUB files, or uh, risk a, re a repair and get my covers back. And so, that's my dilemma, and, I, and I've just decided to um, to just leave it as it is, which is disappointing, I know, uh, and maybe, hopefully, when I get another Kobo, which I will, someday, um, I can uh, fix that, or have that change, because on re regular EPUB files, as you see, uh, the, the covers load just fine. Um, and what is next? Uh, also the battery. The battery on this one. So the battery lasts pretty good. Uh, I don't have to charge this at all when I'm using it a lot. Uh, it's only when... The, the, the complication, though, is when I turn on Wi-Fi on this thing. So right now I don't have any Wi-Fi on. Uh, because if I, as soon as I use Wi-Fi on this e-reader, it immediately drains the battery. So I'll show you. This is my home page again. It it immediately drains the battery. So if I'm downloading the latest uh, ebooks that I've read or that I've bought, and I have my my internet on, the battery will last maybe ten minutes, it, maybe a little bit more than that. But it's it's ridiculous how much this battery drains when as soon as I have uh, Wi-Fi connected on here, but then as soon as I turn it off. The battery lasts me days and days and days. It's very strange. I have I don't I don't hear people talking about that when they. I, mean, I know when people have more advanced e-readers, they say that the the battery will drain quicker than than usual on say like one of those signature handheld ones without the page turn buttons, um, like the Kindle Paperwhite or whatever. Um, or the battery can last you forever. It seems like, but this one here, the the battery is pretty good. Like I said, though, it charges very quickly, so it, it it's not like I have to charge this for three hours just for, you know, 10, 15 minutes of power when this is connected to Wi-Fi. And usually when I'm syncing or downloading ebooks, I plug this in anyways. Um, so that's, that's another major con. And then another gripe I have, <laughs> which I guess is more a reflection of me than... Uh, more a reflection of me than anything to do with uh, my e-reader is that EPUB files come on here EPUB files don't actually they don't they don't change their page numbers so here I'll show you with uh, a book that I showed for my uh, this is um, so this is an EPUB file downloaded, uh, not from the Kobo store, this is a siloed EPUB, EPUB file, this is the, the Lagoon, this is the book on Aristotle and science, uh, and as you see, this is the page numbers there, those page numbers for these EPUB files are fixed in, uh, while on regular Kobo uh, files, they actually change, so if, 
if I have an, uh, a Kobo EPUB file, which I bought off of the Kobo store, and I change the, the font size to ho however big or small I want it, the, file, the page, number, uh, page number changes accordingly. But with co uh, regular pub EPUB files like this one, no matter how much I make the font bigger or smaller, that, that number is always going to stay the same. So I could be clicking for five pages, or five pages, on here, and and that number will maybe move one spot if I make the the uh, font very big. And I know that's a trite thing, but it's something that really does bother me. And it's why I I've been migrating to when I download classics, I move to uh, standard ebooks, which is a website that I recommend to anyone who's interested in, in public domain classics to go check out. Uh, standard uh, ebooks. They have an option to download uh, uh, not just an EPUB file, but the Kobo EPUB file, so that when I download that and sideload that into my e-reader, it the e-reader recognizes it as a Kobo format uh, EPUB, and that immediately immediately solves the problem where I can change the font size, and and that changes the number there. And uh, also with annotations, I'm not. With annotations on EPUB files, I guess this, this is a question for anyone else who knows better than I do. Uh, do those annotations stay on the e on that EPUB file, or do if I were to, um, I don't know, like do those annotations delete if I, for example, move that EPUB file, or if, I know if you delete it, of course it's going to delete, but if I do anything to this e-reader, well. Besides the fact of the reset, like will, will that delete? I don't want to. I don't want those annotations to be deleted because then I take a lot of annotations when I read, and I like to give my thoughts and I like to type out certain ideas that I've had, uh, th things that occurred to me, and I want to keep those annotations because those are for me a part of the re uh, reading experience, but also part of the rereading experience uh, when I'm reading a book. But anyways, I think that's enough. That's all I have to say about my e-reader. So this is the Kobo Forma. This is my e-reader. Uh, this is what I've been living with for the past two years when it comes to e-reading technology. And uh, this is the only thing I have. I don't have a Kindle, so I don't have any books on on the Kindle store or anything. Uh, and if I were to buy another e-reader, I would probably get the... I, look, I just did some research today and looked up what kind of e-readers that uh, Kobo offers now in, in replace of this, and they offer the Kobo Sage. So the Kobo Sage is another 8-inch uh, e-reader, but the the off button is on the back here, and the buttons are a bit more distinct. Like they're, 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 own, they're their own buttons instead of this one big file here. And uh, they also offer the Kobo uh, Libra, which is, has a color option to it. Um, but I'm not interested. I'll just say, like, as a side note, I'm not so interested in a color e-reader. I know that might sound um, a bit strange because, you know, having color is like a, an extra novelty to the reading experience because my books are in color if, I, if they have images, usually, or, or like a cover itself, but or just even highlighting. But uh, I know adding color is, is fairly new for e-readers, and so they're in their very uh, infancy in tech, uh, technology, so there's going to be a lot of uh, improving upon that will ne be necessary before uh, I become interested in color technology in, in an e-reader. But uh, that's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, let me know what you think of your e-readers, or what you think of e-reading in general, or if you think I'm crazy for for uh, sticking with this current e-reader, and maybe I should get a new one. But uh, that will do it for now, and it's another 30-minute video. My apologies. Thanks, BookTube.